Join us, friends. Great Scott, Spock guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, Spock guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. And all right, all right. It is the Spock guy, but sadly, once again, it's not Trey. But you know what? If Trey didn't have something that he had planned for tonight, he would be there. But in this particular case, this particular story, time is of the essence. So we had to bring back the same guys that we had last week in this roundtable discussion because we know a little bit more than we did last week. So we're going to bring all the guys in. And this time, Rob, I, I switched it up a little bit. I, I see on the that. Right hand side. Yeah, I see that. There you go. And uh, Rob uh, said last week that he didn't understand why I put all the good-looking people on one side and all the other people on the other. So, <laughs> so there you go. So, <laughs> so guys, a lot of things have happened in this very short time. This is uh, nine days after the uh, attempted assassination of Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump, as they like to say. I. I, I want to leave the J out, just Donald Trump. And they had the uh, hearings today where they brought Cheadle, the, uh, the uh, was it called, the deputy director of the uh, Secret Service. And she was appointed by Biden. Am I thinking right on that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I think that we would know that Biden wouldn't just appoint anybody. He would appoint someone that is leaning in his direction let's just say i think that's a fair assessment does everybody agree with that oh yeah yeah okay so i listened to i didn't listen to the whole thing i think you did mike did any of you other guys listen to the uh test testimony today part of it most of it not yeah, all i of listened it. to most of it not all of it but there was some very interesting things said and um, I think some very telling things said, uh, you brought up something, Norm, you sent a video over that I'll play in a moment. Um, but I heard several things that made me just kind of go, hmm. So since the last time that we were together, when we filmed this, uh, just two days after the attempted assassination, I actually got in my vehicle and drove to Butler, Pennsylvania. So I could put my eyes on the area, which is kind of what I do. I want to go there and film and go there and capture the area with, with a visual things, cameras, so that nothing can be modified, nothing can be changed other than what could be changed in a very short period of time. Is that, does that make sense to everybody why, why I thought it was important to go? Trey actually went with me. We went up and filmed that. Of course, we filmed a lot of other stuff too. But we actually went there and went to the glass place first. I actually, I shouldn't say I went to the glass place first. I pulled up. There's a, at the entrance of the fairgrounds, there's a business just to the right of the entrance. And we pulled up in that um, parking lot. And there was a state trooper that was at the entrance of the fairground that was stopping people. If you went up to the gate, she would not allow you through. She would stop you. And I saw a couple of guys walk up and talk to her and then turn around and walk off. So I told Trey, well, that's a no-go right there. That's not going to happen. But you could see people on the grounds working and moving the barriers. And they had already taken the uh, the bleachers were already gone. The stage was gone. All that stuff was gone. So uh, a lot of stuff had happened in a very, very short period of time. This would have been last Friday. So that would have been, what, six days after the attempted assassination. So they were cleaning up. So what we did was drove through that parking lot, stopped and looked at the trooper for a second. And then I circled around and I kind of drove around the whole thing. And then we went to the glass company and everybody is familiar with the glass company is where uh, the, the uh, is it glass testing? What is it called? Um, they do something with, with glass. I, I, I'm not sure what they do, but I think they, test glass, or there's something to do with testing. And I'm really not sure what they do, but some say that that building is owned by BlackRock. Uh, now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I've heard people say that, and I've heard multiple people say that. Doesn't make it true, but that's what they say. Um, the, the interesting thing is, and the developments that have happened since, is the shooter, who we believe the shooter was, was in a BlackRock commercial. And BlackRock actually did what they call a short, uh, a stock shorting, where if 
uh, on Donald J. Trump's stocks, where if he would have been assassinated, they would have made billions of dollars. Turns out it didn't happen. So it would make you think that maybe somebody knew that something was going to happen. Would Does anybody have anything uh, on that? Any thoughts? I've not heard anything on that. Yeah. Norm? Well, I mean, it's conspiracy uh, theory. I mean, let's let's say this. It's pieces of puzzles. Now, whether they all fit in the same square or not, we may we may never know. Yeah. We may never know. But you know, it it the irony. Uh, you know, we always say, "What are the odds? What are the chances?" You know, I don't believe in coincidences. I, I think there. We go back to what we spoke about the other day. Of all the points of ingress on that field, you're going to tell me that waterhead found the one spot that nobody else did and got up on that roof and did what he did. I I just have a hard time believing it. Billy, you went out there the other day and one state trooper stopped you from even going to the gate. You've got a whole detail out there and this guy just walks up with whatever he wants and climbs on a roof. You know, that's a very, very good point. I I had no access to the fairgrounds. And I even went on to the grounds of the glass company and an employee, a lady, I don't know who she was or what her capacity was, came out and yelled at us and told us to leave. Uh, Of course, I got a little bit of footage of that, um, but I didn't know if I was going to be able to fly the drone because there's literally a, uh, an airport at the fairgrounds, literally beside it, there's a landing strip, but it's not a airport with a, tower and active airport. It's like a private landing strip. So luckily I was able to fly the drone without any issues. I even ran into another guy uh, that was flying his drone. As I was getting ready to take mine off, I was preparing to take off. I heard another drone and I went, well, heck, there's somebody else flying. And I saw a guy that was down on the same little road that I was on behind the fairgrounds. And I saw him land it and get out and get it and pull and go put it in his truck. And he pulled up and talked to me And he actually works for the local newspaper. And he told me that I said, you know, I was scared this was going to be no fly or there would be a problem. And when I spoke to that trooper, by the way, that lady, not the first time I saw her, I went back up there and spoke to her for a moment and asked her if it was still an active crime scene. And she said that it was not an active crime scene. So I felt a little bit better about flying. And then when I spoke to that guy, he said that he checked all the different places that you have to check to be sure that it is okay and legal to fly. And he found nothing that would keep him from flying. And that's what he does for a living. And so um, the, I, I, I sent the drone up and I was able to get 50 minutes of drone footage and I shot in 1080 and I shot in 4k as well. And I even scanned the top of that building. I got down where the shooter would be behind the behind the the uh, the, the tip of the of the roof, and flew Great. like this. So no matter where he was at, we can get a bird's eye view. And I will tell you something that I learned, and that is, if you look at the shot where after they killed him, there's a a, a drone shot or a shot from an airplane or something overhead where you can see him laying on the roof. Where you see him laying on the roof as opposed to that little hallway that goes between the two buildings, if you count from that hallway over, we counted six humps. You know how the metal is corrugated, so there's a hump, flat spot, hump. We counted six over, so he was laying, we believe, between five and six. So what I did was went with the drone to five and six, went up to the edge of the roof, figured out where that was. And when you look at the roof where the counter snipers were that you could see behind Trump on the left-hand side, you can't see them. The tree impedes you from seeing them. When you go over to the roof where the counter snipers are and you look back, it's the same thing. That tree is definitely in the line of sight between where he was. So I don't know if they were just lucky uh, and were able to get a shot off, but one of you told me that they were saying that there was two other sniper teams. So let's talk about that. Who, who was that? Was that you, Norm, or Mike? So, Bon Gino, bon Gino um, he had said, well, first of all, local authorities, state or local authorities had a, a uh, counter-sniper team, and I think those were the ones on the second floor of that adjacent building. Okay. And I heard yesterday or today in an interview 
where their line of sight was obscured based on the uh, the triangulation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to where they could not have seen uh, the sniper. And then uh, now Bongino said in an interview today, or I heard it today, he identified it as a second counter sniper team uh, took shots and missed. And, and that was the, uh, the volley that, you know, different sounding, you know, weapons and that the actual secret service counter sniper took one shot, one kill uh, in the end. But uh, I don't know that they were a counter sniper team, local or state. They mm -hmm. could have been boots on the ground from, you know, shooting in that direction. I don't, I don't really know if they were counter sniper or not. Well, the shooter was on top of this building right here, the short building. But if you hear the FBI or the CIA or, or secret service talking about this, they act like that this was a two story building and the sniper was on top of the building where they couldn't see him. You see those windows right there, right? That is the windows that the counter sniper team was in supposedly inside of. And you could see that those windows overlook this roof, at least on this end. So either that shooter knew that the counter sniper team was in these windows on this end and knew to stay over here, or he just got real, real lucky. He knew to stay right here where they couldn't see him through the trees. And he also knew not to go over here where they couldn't see him. So, I mean, that's a lot of intelligence for one little guy just popping up in there. Yeah, I would agree. I shot that photo from the back. There was a back way, and I just zoomed in across it. So I'm behind where the counter snipers, the counter snipers that were you could see were on top of that building right there. So if that gives you any idea. So he was shooting from here across to in front of that building. Now, when I flew the drone right here, the counter snipers were obscured from where he was by that clump of trees right there. Yeah. So it just makes me wonder. The other thing that I did was I scanned the top of the, the roof of the short building, scanned the top of the roof of the tall building. I scanned the walls of the tall building and the roof of the tall. The tall building has a tall and a short side by side behind the shorter one that the shooter was on. You know how many bullet holes I saw? Zero. Not one. Well, they only fired one. Uh, let me ask you this, Billy. When he when he climbed up and got on top of that roof and started his crawl, did he uh, that that peak of that uh, roof is called a ridge line? It's a ridge, yeah, it's a ridge okay? line. Mm -hmm. And and looking at that roof, it looks like uh, standing seam metal, which means there's no exposed screw fasteners or anything like that. You know, it's all encapsulated. Did when he was crawling up, he had to go up towards that ridge. To get to see over you know what mm -hmm. i mean my question to you is based on where he was in relationship to the stage or the platform did he actually crawl over that ridge or did he stay behind that ridge for cover and concealment it appears that he stayed behind the ridge now i flew the drone when i was hovering there's a setting on the drone screen that you could see your distance from what's below you so i could drop down to one foot two foot, three foot, you know, so if you're, if you're sitting in a prone position or lying in a prone position with the gun and you're looking across, you're going to be what, maybe a foot and a half high, a foot yeah. high maybe. And so I dropped down to that where you could just barely see over the ridge line, and, um, and even backed up. And it looks like there's a possibility at that particular ridge that I was talking about between five and six, it almost looks like there was some touch-up done on the ridge cap, like it was painted white, like maybe some bullets did hit it and they fixed it. But my experience has been is when the FBI or the CIA go in and um, uh, investigate something like that, they'll take the bullet holes. i tell you what they did. The guy that supposedly shot in Las Vegas, remember he shot up all the tour buses? When they got those tour buses back, some of them came to a bus company in Gallatin where my business is. They cut a one foot section out. So if there was a bullet hole when they got the bus back, there was a 12 inch section cut out of the bus. Right. See where that happened at all in any of this. And you mentioned that they say that the local counter sniper team shot and missed. Well, that means that they hit something. Yeah. You know, they had to hit the top of the roof. They had to hit the roof behind it. 
the the bullets didn't just go over the buildings because they would they can't shoot up because he's up. So they had to shoot down, which means they had to shoot on through the roof. No holes. I'm telling you guys, no holes in that in that roof. Well, wow. if it's no longer a crime scene, why wouldn't they allow you in there? That's a good question. And you know, I asked that lady as she was telling us to leave. I said, why are y'all, what do y'all have to hide here? You know, what is it that you're trying to cover up? Because all we want to do is see the distance and just make a, 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 a video of this scene so that, that the public has a copy of it, not just the FBI or the CIA. You know, there needs to be some oversight by we the people. You know what I'm saying? So I felt compelled to go film that. I haven't put any of that out yet. I don't know how I'm going to put it out or even if I'm going to put it out, but I have it. So if there's any questions about what happened, what it looks like, and it almost looked like on the on the the end of the building that was the the least obscured, the end of the building to the far left, which would have been seen by those windows. It also almost looks like that they that there was a lot of fingerprint dust there. I didn't see anything at the other end of the building where he was supposedly laying as far as anything that would make you go, oh, well, there's blood stains, there's a, a, a hole, there's a bullet hole, there's something. And look, I'm getting ready to, to tell you something that's going to really make me sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist. And that is, not if you don't already believe it, um, but that is two weeks after the stuff in Las Vegas, after the shooting from the, uh, what was the name of that hotel? The um, Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay. I happened to be going to Vegas. It was already something preset. I didn't go there specifically for this, but I stayed at um, at the Pyramid, which is next door, the Luxor, which is just next door to the Mandalay Bay. From the Luxor, from my room, I could look, I could see Mandalay Bay, and I could also look down and see the uh, the place where that guy supposedly shot all that stuff. So when I went to to that, of course, I wanted to film that as well, and there was all kinds of police presence. And they had it blocked off where you couldn't get in there. But uh, after I was there for about a week, later that week, the police presence was pretty much gone. So I walked over there with my camera. And what I was expecting to see was bullet holes in the pavement. Um, there's a giant metal pole that is between the Mandalay Bay and that. And when I'm saying it's giant, that metal pole's that big around. And it's about 70, 60 or 70 feet tall. And where he shot from, that pole would have been directly in the line of sight. So I thought I was going to see bullet holes in the pole. I thought that he would overshoot probably the, the venue, you know, where he was spraying like this. He would have shot beyond it. So I couldn't get on where the pavement was, where the, the people were standing, but I could get on the street on the far side. So I thought there's going to be bullet holes on the far side, guys. I saw zero bullet holes, not one. There was no holes in that pole. I show. I put the camera over the fence to, to do the pavement. There was no bullet holes in the pavement. There was no bullet holes on the other street, on the far side. The only place I did see a bullet hole was in that gas tank. You remember they claimed the guy shot that gas tank back there? There was a bullet hole in that gas tank. But I don't know that it was an actual real hole, but it, you know, it was a hole that you could see. You know, so anyway... It just made me think, hmm, that's interesting that there's literally no evidence that anything happened at this place, yet, what, 60 people were murdered there, and um, maybe 50, 50 or 60 people, and 200 people were shot there. Zero evidence. No blood stains, no bullet holes, no nothing. And um, so that's just an aside. But anyway, I just happened to be there and get that footage uh, way back when that happened. Before we get off the subject of this roof, um, you know, I've been doing roofing part time since 2017 and uh, that building that kid was on, they're calling it a 112. But let's just give him say it's a 212 roof. The bottom line is, if you look at any double wide mobile home, you're looking at one to 212 pitch. Yeah. Okay? Um, and, and you look at it like a time clock. You know, uh, if you've got a roof that kind of goes straight up, you're looking at a 12, 12 pitch. Most roofs that we live in, our homes are 412 to 612 pitch, every now and then a 712 pitch. But a 212 pitch, I mean, uh, you're not going to fall. <laughs> the bottom line is you're not, especially if you're on your belly, you're not yeah. going to slide, you're not going to fall. 
And I think it was, I think it's uh, uh, Congressman Fallon, I want to say from Texas. Mm -hmm. He pointed that out to this uh, director that you, that she came out misinformed or trying to CYA when she said, you know, we couldn't put people on that roof because of the, the they, they're calling it the slope. It's actually pitch, mm -hmm. but yeah, but you didn't have a problem putting the counter snipers on a three twelve pitch. The guys that was that a much steeper were on a steeper roof. Mm -hmm. And now, um, you know, now Norm, the one twelve means that. And correct me if I'm wrong. That means one foot of drop every twelve feet. Is that what that's that right? Means? Okay. Yeah, and you can think of it for the layman terms in ter in terms of a time clock. If the elbow stays steady. You're at zero, zero, one, twelve, two, twelve, you know, so you're building it up to straight up twelve, twelve. And and she had the other counter, the uh, Secret Service counter snipers were on a three, twelve roof. They were on more steep of a roof. Um, so that negated that. And then you had the FBI guy up there washing the blood off with a water hose. He didn't have no problem standing on it. And I don't know if y'all seen this video, and I don't know how this old guy got access. He's seventy something years old. He looked like he was wearing official type garb, but he was up there, climbed up there on that building, and and his video came out yesterday or today. Because I'm seventy something years old, I'm not falling off the roof. Mm -hmm. So all, all of that is for people that rely on other people to do their thinking for them, because it doesn't take more than about two brain cells to figure out. He was laying on a flat roof for all intent and purposes. It had a little bit of slope or pitch to it, but um, to sit there and, and excuse that we didn't have that covered because of the pitch of the roof is, is th that won't fly anywhere. Um, I don't know. Those, those roofs can be dangerous, Norm. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, the, what that exposes <laughs> is that this lady does not know what she's talking about. She she's has full no of, She's full of crap. That's the bottom line. I and think so, she was told that today twice. And so, uh, yeah, they they were uh, they were uh, telling her. So I'm gonna play you the video that you sent real quick. This is uh, an excerpt from. Uh, does the Secret Service routinely record communications between and amongst detail? Radio communications. Any communication. Email communications are uh, captured as well as uh, text messages. And then, depending on the detail, uh, radio communications are recorded. Does the Secret Service have recorded communications from the July 13th event? We do not have radio communications from that day. Uh, does the Secret Service routinely... So, right there, just lets me know that that it, they're covering it up. That, that makes me believe that she is covering this thing up. Um, another thing that makes me believe that she covered up, something that she said today, was they asked if they knew how many uh, shells, how many shell casings were found on the roof. She said, yeah, I know. I've talked to the FBI. I know. Okay, well, tell us. Oh, no, I, I can't tell you. Why can't you tell me? Unless you're you're needing that number to be not known until after you make up your lie. You know, you're going to create a story, and you don't want that that fact to be known. If, if it's a fact, it shouldn't matter. The guy's dead. I mean, what are we going to do? Uh, dig him up and try him again? You know, um, so those two things make me think this lady is covering this thing up. She knows darn well what happened. Billy, well, let's go. Go ahead, Mike. I was going to say in 60 days, she'll tell you everything. That's yeah. Yeah. That, that's when everything's supposed to be, uh, completed the investigation 60 days. So I, I've I, never I, heard of that either. I, I want to go back to what we yeah. said the other day. I said, I want to hear the communications in the communication center of the recordings. Okay. That Congress person, well, asked you me, won't get those because they're not yeah. they're they don't exist. So but let, let's go back. Let's go back to today when that guy asked her the question. Now, a layman being asked that question will automatically make the right assumption that he's talking about verbal radio communications. But when he she is asked that question, and what communications? He said any communications. She didn't go to the radio. <laughs> go back and listen to what she said. She said, without exception, she said, well, we record emails and text. And then her comment was, because she knew she's caught, depending <laughs> upon the detail, we may record radio. Um, I got news for you. 
the radio communications are the most important communications because a guy's not sitting there with a sniper, counter sniper rifle, checking his email and text. <laughs> He's got an earpiece on. He's communicating. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we, we, we do emails and we do text. But based on the detail, we may have a re recording of the radio transmissions. Well, do you have any from uh, the 13th? No, we do not. I would submit that they are recorded every single time in every situation. I promise you they are. I promise mm -hmm. you she has them. And I yeah. think she just lied to Congress. Mm -hmm. I yeah. really do. I heard her also say today something, you know, they were trying, they were looking for her to perjure herself. And I feel like she did. They oh, asked wow. her, there was something that they kept asking her about. Did she use her personal phone? to communicate with colleagues, I think is the way they said it. And she multiple times through the day kept saying no. And then one time she went, well, yeah, I do. So I was like, what the, you know, and then she was like, well, is, but you were asking me, did I do that in a, in a business way or did I do it in a friendship way or something of that nature? She was trying to say, well, you know, I text my friends that work here on my personal phone, but you know, she was trying to kind of get out of it. But I felt like she perjured herself right at that moment. How about when they asked her, had she had communication with the actual counter snipers? And she said, yes. And they said that day or the next day. And then they quantified it as it was 72 hours later. She allegedly spoke to the counter sniper that took the shot. Listen, <clears throat> if you know your rear end's about to be on the chopping block, the, the very the very first phone call I'm going to make is to that field commander in Pittsburgh, having that boy get on the phone. And I'm not even going to get on the phone. I'm putting him on a jet and I'm flying him to Washington. And we're going to have a closed door session before I go before the public and certainly before Congress. She didn't even communicate with him for 72 hours. OK, that would have been one of the first people as, as the director I want to talk to. I don't want to talk to all the all the fluff in between. I want to talk specifically <clears throat> to him period or norm you get on an airplane and you fly to butler pennsylvania and you have the field agent from pencil from pittsburgh come and y'all walk that area so you know what you're talking about she absolutely did not care i mean she the what the vibe that i got was it was a complete cover-up and she didn't care to know any of it she didn't well, try to figure out any of it Apparently, in the Biden administration, if you're the border czar, that means you never go to the border. If you're in charge of the Secret Service, you never go to the, the first assassination attempt in 43 years. So apparently, there's a page or a memorandum somewhere in their playbook that says, listen, when it hits the fan, we just won't show up. And maybe next week, we'll get something else in the news and it'll all go away. So I want to say this. I have spent more time at that scene. Than the director of the of the secret. I was Service. just going to say that. <laughs> <clears throat> that that that's what blew my mind listening to that today. I I was flabbergasted when she said it. She hasn't even been to the scene at that's all. Crazy, crazy. I, I I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so you know, as a business owner, and if some let's say one of my employees had an accident in a vehicle and someone was killed. The first thing I'm going to do is go to that scene with my camera and start looking visually to know what happened right then to try to un to try to understand what happened so I'm able to defend myself and my company and my employee and you know she didn't do any of those things I can't I, I can't it blows my mind Well we said it the other day the communications in the communication center if, if they got those and they play those unedited, it will answer all our questions. And today before Congress, this woman got up there and said, oh, yeah, we capture emails and texts like you got counter snap snipers up there in the heat of battle looking at their texts and, and, and emails. I mean, I mean, you really got to be brain dead to even comprehend. Hey, man, we got this guy over there with this rifle shooting at a former president. Let me check my emails and see if I got any messages. Are, yeah. you, are you kidding me? And, yeah. and all we said was, we want to hear the radio communications. And she said, nope, depending upon the detail, we may or may not have those. And what, well, do you have any for the 13th? No, we don't have any of those. How convenient. Unbelievable. So I would want to know if they had them for, e for if they had those for each 
uh, event that has happened prior to that. If they do, she's lying. That's that's it's that easy. Um, it, the the whole thing, man. It, she needs to be fired. She really needs to be in jail today. Yeah. I think. Yeah, there's a man dead because they allowed a shooter to get up there. Uh, and by the way, we went over to the town that that guy was from, uh, just outside of Butler. And something that we learned about Butler, Butler is a, a really nice town and it's above Pittsburgh. Uh, I went downtown Butler and spent a lot of time there. It's a beautiful town. But the the difference between, and Michael be able to appreciate this, the difference between living in the South and living in the North is there you kind of get in a town like Butler and it, and the town never ends. It just keeps the name keeps, you know, it'll say the township of it's like Butler is this big circle and then it's the township of Buffalo and the township of this and the township of that. But all of it is really Butler. And it's just these little things all the way through all the way to Pittsburgh. In fact, when I was looking up for famous people on that lived in Butler um, on Wikipedia, they claimed um, the girl, the lady that was Agent 99 on Get Smart was from Butler. And uh, and I actually went and filmed her childhood house, which is probably getting ready Felden? to be. Was her name Felden? Uh, her name was Barbara Felden. Felden. Bar Bar Barbara Felden. That's her. Maybe they should bring her back to investigate this. Get exactly. Smart, you usually close the case in 30 minutes. <laughs> That's right. She's 91 years old, still alive, by the way. So I yeah. went to her house, but what's funny is Butler's up here, Pittsburgh's here. The town that she was from, which is the same town that the shooter's from, is down here below Pittsburgh. But Butler is claiming that she lives in Butler. You see, so it's just this bizarre. I, I really don't know how to understand it. But the uh, what is this? Bethel, um, Bethel is it Bethel Grove that uh, that the shooter's from? Um, it's Thanks. Bethel something. Well, if you go back to England, Billy, they kind of set it up that way over there. And when you when you go back to when we colonize all these boroughs and different yeah. townships, they kind of adopted that type of, um, of mapping uh, from from England. I would say if you go back over to England, like London, but then you got Kensington, you got you got all the little boroughs yeah. within. Yeah, so it's kind of the same it's, thing. It's interesting. That's not something that we're used to in the South. It's not really like that. Um, but you have Nashville proper and then you'll have, you know, they'll call five points and they'll call it that. But it's not it's not the same thing as, as what I witnessed there. Uh, and another thing that that is interesting, I feel like, is we were south of town and we were going to where the shooter lived in uh, Bethel Park. That's what it's called. And we were going to Bethel Park where the shooter lived, which is also where Barbara Felden lived. They're literally about two miles apart. And I ran across the grave of Andy um, Warhol. Who? Warhol. Andy Warhol. Thank you, Rob. I um, knew Rob was on this yeah, podcast for no reason. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> and I could not yeah. think of it. And his real last name was Warhola with an A. His parents were buried there, and he's buried below it. Literally, Barbara Feldman's house, Andy Warhol, and the shooter's house are all within maybe a mile and a half of each other. They're all really close together. And I have a, a funny, sad story that I'm going to tell you real quick. Uh, and this is kind of off the subject, but it's also on the subject about accidentally going to the shooter's house. So I had punched in an address that I thought was Barbara Feldon's house. And so we're heading to Barbara Feldon's house. So I get to a street where directly in front of me, there's a... Um, of a barrier on the street that says, uh, do not cross police Bethel Park. Do not cross this or something like that. So I told Trey, I said, they just put that up because the construction entrance to the elementary school. And by the way, I didn't mention that. The reason that her house is probably going to be torn down is part of the land where the house is and the house next to it, the city bought or the state bought and there's an elementary school being built there now. So the entrance to the elementary school is where the driveway to her house was. So I'm looking for a construction entrance. So I'm thinking they just block that because they don't want people driving through there because of the construction entrance to the elementary school. So I go around that barrier and I and I look and I see caution tape, you know, like, like crime scene tape. And then I see a policeman and I went, oh crap. So I pull over 
And the policeman gets out and walks over to me and I roll the window down and go, hey, I'm looking for this house. This was Barbara Feldon's house, Agent 99. And he goes, oh, that's where, what street? And I flipped to the next page and I showed him the street. He says, that's about two and a half miles from here. You go out, da 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 and you go over there. So as we're backing out and I turn around, he's standing there looking at me like, <laughs> we saw our cameras, you know, and he's like, I don't know about this. So as I'm driving out, Trey goes, hey, man, I think that's where the shooter lives. And I went, what? Because I even asked him, I said, is there, you know, what happened here, a crime or something? He said, no, just security. And I went, oh, okay. So I'm driving out and then it hits me. Trey says that. And I went, you know what? And I look in the rearview mirror and I can see the shooter's house. And I went, oh my God, I put in the wrong address. <laughs> so Mr. Policeman, if you're listening to this, I promise you, I did not lie to you. I thought I was at the other house. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so Trey and I started making circles and we filmed all that, but yeah, I, I almost uh, got in trouble and when it was absolutely perfectly innocent, I didn't mean to do it. He probably thought he recognized you from a wanted poster. I, I would not doubt that. He had been down at the post office probably. <laughs> remember how they used to have the yeah. wanted? <laughs> yep. Yep. I have so, a hard I have a hard time with a crime scene of this nature being broke down in three days. And then having a director say, I'll get a final report to you in 60. Yeah. I have a real issue with that. Well, um, the whole thing is, and what they were trying to drive home today is this is a, this is a security issue. And I don't mean a security issue from a standpoint of, of someone hurting us, but it's a security issue for Americans as a whole that we feel like that our nation is is very vulnerable now because the people that we felt like were protecting a leader of this country completely let us down in a way that a 20 year old kid broke down uh, the secret service i thought the secret service like you said the last shooting was what 43 years ago yeah another thing that they that uh, i heard today was that that the last one was what ronald reagan and that was the last time that there was an attempted assassination of a president or a uh, a presidential candidate or a former president. But they also said that the very last time um, that there was a an assassination that let's see, how did they put it? That the oh, the very last time that an incumbent president was not on the ticket was the last time that a president was assassinated, which was Johnson. And so Kennedy was assassinated. Johnson ran, but he didn't run again. Or he was became president and didn't run again. This is the first time that that has happened since then. I think, or the first time this has happened ever, I think they said, that an incumbent president did not run again. Well, I'll tell you this, this oversight committee, I, I know Comer chaired it. What's the guy's name that's the... Um majority it was it raskin or whatever yeah i think raskin yeah from is he from what massachusetts um or somewhere anyway i i'm gonna be honest with you now the verbiage they use listen it's just like they did to biden okay we got no more use for you we're not gonna put you out to pasture we're just gonna take you at back knock you in the head okay we're not even gonna let you graze okay mm -hmm. all right <laughs> This girl, this lady over the, the Secret Service, she's in the same boat as Biden. She She's done. She just may not realize it yet. All those Democrats on that oversight committee today, we as conservatives better understand something. They are catering and pandering to votes in November by their actions today, knowing that it was a lost cause. There is no way those people gave two red cents whether Donald Trump lived or died. I don't believe it. No, I don't right. believe it at all. I think they were pandering for votes, trying to show that they have a heart, empathy, and compassion. I didn't buy it at all. And uh, Most of them were talking about gun control. The vast well, majority. That's my next point. This guy used his opening statement to attack AR-15s. Mm -hmm. Okay? I got news for you. I looked at that wuss. He ain't never even seen an AR-15. He don't, he don't own an AR-15. He, he'd run from a BB gun. You know, and I, I love all these guys getting up there. They, every time there is a situation like this, okay, 
they they hone in, they hone in, they hone in, they hone in. I, I, you know, and then all of a sudden they want to show empathy and it's a political violence and it attacks America as a whole and we got to come together. I'm not buying that at all. That was all a stage show for them to try to pander votes in November. And, you know, don't get me wrong. There's going to be some people out there that sympathize. Well, look, the Democrats have a heart, you know. <laughs> no, they don't. Not not <laughs> not on this situation. No, they mm-hmm. don't. If Go Donald Trump would have went away, they would have thrown a party and half the Republicans in Washington would have chipped in to help them. You did what, Rob? I said you got to have a brain to have a heart. That's so. right. <laughs> got to pump the blood somewhere. A couple of things I found I, interesting today during that hearing. One was... Uh, when they were grilling her about uh, when they received the uh, threat from uh, Iran. Yeah. Did did you hear that one? Yeah. And they made a good point. Uh, She was claiming, you know, yeah, when they received that threat, you know, that uh, uh, they were preparing things differently with Trump. But yeah, Yeah, they they were taking the security away. They allowed a 20, 20 year old nobody to get through their security. You know, what would a you know professional mm-hmm. be able to do? Yeah. You know? I thought that was pretty interesting. They they grilled her pretty good on that. Um, but then the other thing too, like you just mentioned, was uh uh they asked her if Trump had ever requested or his team ever requested more security. And she replied that nothing was requested on Saturday, on the 13th. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, what about before? Well, you know, I'd have to look at my, you know, I'd have to get back with you on that. Blah, 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 blah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So, but they kept. That means that we know, have three minutes left. But the other day we ran a little bit long, which is fine. So we're going to keep right on rocking. Anyway, she, she said on the 13th, uh, no no request was made for extra security. And I think it was Jim Jordan that was talking to her at the time, said, well, maybe they got tired of you saying no. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't bother. Yeah. Well, uh, another little thing that they talked about was out of the Pittsburgh office that they had given, I think the numbers were they gave Trump four. Three. three it was at three agents, and they gave Jill Biden – which was well, was speaking inside of a casino with, to only 400 people, gave her 12 agents, gave uh, Trump three. So she got four times as many agents. Now, he has been uh, – nobody's trying to kill Jill. That's not a thing. Plus, she's inside of a casino. The odds of somebody getting in there with a, a weapon of any kind is not very high. And uh, so it just shows – there. They're showing their hand. They just didn't think they would ever get caught, I think, is... is Billy, Billy you, you didn't get the memorandum, Billy. They don't have to send the people down there. They have other resources and assets to counterattack any any assassination attempts. They can send the guys text. They can send them emails. They don't need to actually have shooters on the ground. They can just text an email. That's and, it. And, and you were going to say something a minute ago, Rob. Go ahead. Well, actually, I, I forget what my thought was on that. But one thing that we've not talked about, and I don't want to bring it up because we don't have much time is, you know, everybody keeps saying he's a 20 year old kid with a gun. You look how accurate that shot was. Yeah. And all that pressure he was under the heat. He, he had to have known he was being looked at and he yeah. probably wasn't going to survive. So I think there's more uh, to this fellow than meets the eye. I really do. I think there's a whole lot. I think he had a lot of training uh, because that that came awful close, you know. And they said they they said that the gun club, by the way, that he went to. He told his parents he was going to the range that morning, and the parents knew something was up because they say that that when he did not come home, they called the police. Yeah, and is. said that he did not come home. But that that range, something that's interesting. I think I mentioned this last time that the range that I shoot at only has a hundred feet inside, and we have to use that piece of paper to adjust the sights and stuff to simulate a hundred yards, 150 yards and stuff. They said that the place that he shoots at has a 50 yard, a hundred yard, and I think 167 yard range. So he was able to, to shoot under 167 range condition, which is very close to the distance that he was shooting. 
just a hair over. So um, if somebody taught him how to sight that thing and he went and spent some time shooting, he could be pretty accurate with it. She was asked today, point blank, did he have a range finder in his hand, possession? She didn't want to answer the question. She was asked two or three times the question, answer the question. She said yes, but then she wanted to cover her rear end again. And she goes, but that's not one of the things they screen for. Well, listen, I'm going to a Trump rally. Let me see. Let me get my range finder, um, my speed loader. You know, I mean, are you kidding me? Oh. You got a guy out there on the back 40 marking off steps, looking at range finders. You've already identified him an hour before the event that he's suspicious, according to her. At, okay. And nobody in law enforcement went up and Terry stopped this guy. And if you, if you want to know what a Terry stop is, it's Terry versus Ohio. It is the actual case law that gives you as a law enforcement officer the right to approach somebody who is being suspicious as long as you can articulate one of three things. He's committed a crime, he, he is in the process of committing a crime, or he is about to commit a crime. Terry versus Ohio. Look it up. This guy's walking around with a range finder, and because it's not on the list of no-fly uh, things, they just let him on the plane. That would well, be, I the mean, question, Norm, was what they asked her was, when did he become a threat? At what point did he become a threat? I think and you remember that, Mike? Okay, so the question was, time. to me, when I see a guy with a range finder, that's a threat, okay? Yeah. Because well, there's wasn't there's her, one reason that he's there with the rangefinder. That was the question. He's not hitting. It wasn't her balls. answer like two seconds before the shots. Were That's exactly. Basically, they, basically they they <laughs> drilled down to her answer was when he shot. That was when he became a threat. No, when I see you with the rangefinder, you're a threat. If I see you with a gun, I'm shooting you. There's. I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm just going to shoot you. You know, there's no reason for a person to have a gun at that rally everybody knows not to do that right yeah she was asked a question. I'm, a, I'm a concealed carrier i carry a gun every day but i'm not stupid enough to take a gun to a truck rally or any no. rally i'm going to no. give you i'm going to give you proof real simple proof where she perjured herself today she uh, amongst many questions she might have perjured herself on but this one is the quintessential coup de gras she was asked, are you the best person to lead the Secret Service? And she flat out lied said yes. I mean, <laughs> that ain't perjury. If that ain't that perjury, lady, I don't know what is. You know, I thought it was interesting, too. They, <laughs> they basically insinuated that the only reason she was there was she was a DEI hire. Did yeah. you hear him say that to her? I heard that You one. know, and, uh, so, and I think that's probably correct. And I even heard somebody say that she should go back to guarding Doritos. Yeah, did she work for Dorito or what was the name of that company? Frito Lay, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think she worked for Frito. So they told her she should go back to guarding Doritos. I, I heard that out loud when yeah. I heard that. Well, but the know, reality is, is this lady has no training no. in this capacity. She should not be there. And if I was in charge, I would have gone there fully prepared to defend my team. Going, that guy shot this many times. We knew this. The breakdown was such and such told such and such, and that didn't happen. She didn't offer any of that. All she offered was, I don't know, and we'll know in 60 days. She she and my orcas were requested next week to go before another committee. Both she and my orcas declined to go, and now that committee has to subpoena them as well. It's pretty bad when we have to subpoena the leaders of our, quote, transparent federal government to show up and tell us what happened. And somebody that works for us. You shouldn't yeah. have to subpoena them. That should be part of their job title. When right. you call them, they come. And the other thing is, is sixty. how far are we from the actual election? Well, 110 well, days? 100 days? Something like that. Something like that. So if she could make it 60 more days and the Democrats win, she's home free. She's just praying to God that she could hold it off until they win. I don't think they're going to win, but that's what she's banking on. And well, let, she's me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this. Can any of you guys think of a time in history where we have gotten so little information 
on something like this. I mean, it's been nine, nine, ten days, and all the information I've gotten has been from social media. It mm-hmm. hasn't been from the United States. It hasn't been from, from anybody. I mean, we don't even know anything about the shooter, really. Nothing. We and don't know right. that's my how point. many shots were fired. I mean, we, we don't know anything. And that's my point, Mike. She had a chance to go out there and say, look, yep. this was a breakdown. We screwed up. It was because of this. I promise you we have it together. Everybody's safe. The country's safe. All of our leaders are safe. She didn't do any of that. You know, and that's the whole reason we wanted to hear from you because you are in charge of our leaders. How do we know that they're not trying to kill Trump and Biden and there's some kind of a coup going on? We don't know that that's not happening. You know, both of them are are, uh, trying to be killed at the same time or they're trying to, you know, they're claiming Biden has um, uh, COVID. You know, if he died today, they just say, oh, it was COVID. So what if they'd have taken Trump out and then Biden has COVID and he's dead? Who takes over then? Speaker of the House. Yeah. Well, it would go to the vice president and then speaker. But my yeah. point is, is this could be an attempted coup. And they're, they were try, they were thinking that they could take both of these guys out and Trump survived. I mean, I just don't understand what the big secret is. I mean, if there's if it's what they're claiming it is, uh, you know, a lone gunman and uh, they, they blew the security that day. Why not just say it? There is no secret. That's I mean, I, I don't get what the big yeah. secret is here. She would not tell how many shell casings were on that roof. If we knew how many shell casings were on that roof, we'll know how many times he shot, and then we can go back and count the shots, listen, watch the videos, listen to the shots. We'll know what he did. We'll know what they did. She does not want us to know because they're going to try to gather everything that they can gather and figure out a story that covers their butt. And then they're going to tell the story. That's what's happening. Well, she passed those answers off to the FBI, the same FBI that raided Mar-a-Lago and his whole criminal case got thrown out for its constitutional uh, breaches. So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't even think some of your middle of the road Democrats right now who, you know, um, I don't think they have very much confidence in, in, uh, in the federal government and this party. It's going to take it's going to take a serious overhaul and cleaning. And, and to be honest with you, I, I think federal government's fat right now. I, I think we can do away with a lot of different divisions. Mm-hmm. I think I think I think one of the things, even like when Trump was in office and they were worried about. Uh, let's go back to this. When when Trump came into office and Sessions was the attorney general. They were worried about the legalization of marijuana and they were worried about gay marriage. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trump at a federal level couldn't care less about either one of those things. He pushed it back to the states. And what got Sessions fired was Sessions started raiding all the chicken houses, okay, over in Mississippi and Louisiana. And what they didn't realize was, yeah, we took all the illegals out of the chicken houses on Friday but nobody showed up for work on Monday because we don't have a trained force. I guess my point is uh, we have zero confidence in these people um, at all. And I think, I think it needs to be scrubbed. And I think Trump's ideology when it comes to a lot of these socio uh, type issue, issue, social issues, uh, I was going to say socioeconomics, it does actually get into economics is, he would much rather push it away from the federal government and let the states handle it individually and let the voters in those states decide on these type of socioeconomic decisions other than the federal government. The ideology of the federal government is totally, uh, of the Democrats is totally opposite. The states are too stupid to make decisions. So therefore send us all your money. We're going to tax you to death and we will tell you how it's going to be. Right. Well, the Constitution uh, gives the, those uh, rights to the states. Uh, most of those things should be states' rights issues, period. But period. They, they've tried to take the stuff back over, just like they took over schools. In the 60s, they were going to take over the schools for a short period of time, kind of put them together, create a structure, and then they were going to be out of it. And here we are all these years later, and they're right in the middle of it. And look at our school system. It's a disaster. There's nothing that the government has touched. 
that works right. The right. post office is the oldest business in the United States, and it barely works. Yes. And they lose money. It's a disaster. I spend $120,000, $130,000 a year with the post office. I promise you it is a complete disaster. But I rely on it because I, the, the cost of shipping something there is on half the price of UPS or FedEx. So I have to use the service, but it is a complete disaster. You'd be surprised at how many packages just never get delivered. They're just right. gone. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> That's right. You're you're in the same business I'm in. And wow, it's a disaster. And um, so um, the it's, the the government is not a solution. Was it Ronald Reagan that said this? The was it the seven scariest words? I'm from the government and I'm here to help. You know, yeah. you know something like that. Yeah. And. Um, but it's just none. It it does not work. The system does not work. And pushing everything back to the states and making it smaller is definitely a solution. And like you say, the Democrats don't want that. They want to be in charge of everything. The de she put a sixty day window on this investigation to give Kamala Harris and the Democrats time to recover from this and come up with a formidable game plan to go against Trump. I, I, I will I will go right now on record today. What is it, the 22nd? In 61 days from today, we'll have no more answers from that government entity than we have today. We will not have one additional answer to any problem that comes from them. Not to say we won't have additional answers, but they're going to come from other sources. It will not come from the FBI. It will not come from the Secret Service or anybody else. And I believe that's because they're complicit in it. Yeah. Well, they think a range finder is okay at a government at, at a rally uh, being carried around by a guy that they've already quantified as suspicious. That's okay because it's not on the list. And you know, maybe, look, maybe, maybe he shanked a golf ball over there and he's just playing through. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. So I went to that glass building that he went to six days before me. You know how long I was there before somebody came and got me? Within two minutes. 22 seconds. Yeah. That's yeah. how much film I hit record when I got out of my vehicle. From the time that I hit record to the time somebody was on me was 22 seconds. I have it on my video. But if yeah. the Secret Service was there that day, you could have walked all the way around, did range finding, yeah. you know, sent some text and emails to the Secret Service. And I thought about, I should have asked that lady, why weren't you here last Saturday? You could have stopped all this. All yeah. of it. You know. It's all her fault. <laughs> Who who was she? What who? I don't know, but boy, she was on me in twenty two seconds. Was she I, in I, uniform or no? No, she was just she she did have a lanyard around her neck, but she walked up. I pulled up, and I was a long ways from her, from where she went came out the door. I was at the far back where you know where uh, you've seen when you're standing beside the building where they were filming, and you could see the shooter moving. There's a little uh, little rise there, and there's like a, a concrete wall. And I could see on top of the building. I was that far. I was literally there working my way to the uh, fence when I heard her yell at me. And uh, actually where I was was where they were standing under the clump of trees where they could see him. I was yeah. moving towards those trees when I heard her. And on my camera, it was 22 seconds. Well, I mean, they do have the right to ask you to leave if it's private property. I, agree. I adamantly agree. But my point is, why is it a problem with me being here today? Yeah. And last Saturday, there was thousands of people here. And nobody said a word, right. including a guy that shot someone. But if you you're know. on public right of way or public access property, um, Felicia just got to go back inside because, you know, Felicia. Yeah. Felicia. <laughs> yeah. And look, I didn't I'm not saying that she didn't have the right to ask me to, my, to leave. My point is, is I was there not doing anything malicious. All I was doing was trying to gather information so we the people can figure out what happened. And this lady stops me from doing that. Where six days prior to that, a guy with a gun that intended on killing uh, the uh, one of the presidential candidates was allowed to just roam, roam free and nobody stopped him. And there was Secret Service and snipers there. And nobody stopped him. So how does that work? It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't you know, they could have intercepted him in 22 seconds, just like she intercepted me in 22 seconds. But yeah. they didn't. They chose not to intercept. They, Billy, they, I go back. I'll say this, and I hope I'm wrong. God, I hope I'm wrong. I don't think they'll ever let him have the keys of the White House. I don't think it'll ever happen. I think it's over with. I mean, that's just my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, but I, 
I really do, but I just feel like it's it's over. That, I don't I mean, see how that's possible, Rob, but I hope you're I wrong. Hope I'm wrong. I hope because I'm wrong. if this nation doesn't do something soon, it's not going to be a nation. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And like Norm said last last time, Norm made a comment. If if something like that happens, the good old boys are gonna have to take exception. They'll take it. care yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hate that. I don't want that to happen because yeah, me either. Look, but you we can't could return from that. that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't. You can't go back. Right? Once once you make that move forward, you can never take it back. You know. Yeah. So that's. I think that's why we hesitate as guys like we are today is that we know that. Once you get up off that couch out of that air condition and you take that step forward, there's no going back. It's, it's, yeah. you know, and it's, if it's, we, uh, if we lived in any other country over the last eight years, okay. If we lived in any, well, let's go back to Barack Obama's term. Okay. His, his terms and Biden's term. If we lived in any other country other than the United States of America, we'd have been already at war. Yeah. Any other country, Many wars have started for a lot less than what we've had to go through here. But we go back to what you say. The AC's blowing at 70. The pension checks are coming in. Um, you know, we're fat, dumb, and happy. And unless it's knocking on our front door and we feel threatened individually, we're not going to join the team and get out there and fight. But I do think if, 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 if we can validate proof again of ballot harvesting, which if you, what was it, a thousand mules? I mean, you got a guy riding up at four o'clock stuffing 400 ballots in a box and that's okay. Atlanta says we're going to stop counting ballots at what, 2 a.m. We'll resume and everybody wakes up the next day at eight o'clock. Trump, you go to bed at 2 a.m. Trump's up by six, 700,000 votes. You wake up at eight o'clock thinking, okay, they're going to start again. Let me get my coffee. Oh, no, we done found 900,000 uh, ballots over in a warehouse across town, and they're all Joe Biden ballots. Every one of them. And, yeah. and, and, but the thing I don't understand about even all that, okay, is how not one court of law could find that to be election interference or fraudulent election. I, I just don't understand that. <clears throat> so... Um, Listen, the honesty of this government is gone. That's that's the reality of it. It's just there's no honest people or very few honest people out there that are willing to to give up power because of honesty. Well, to Rob's point, what he said is going to come a day. I don't think it'll be guys like us that pop off that that first round. OK, but when that round goes off, and it's probably we have crackpots on our side too. Trust me, we got waterheads over here, just like they got them over there. <laughs> All right, when that yep. round fires off, you're gonna have to make a decision. Yep. And you know, as long as you're at peace with your maker and you're fighting for what you think is right, you're gonna have to get out there and fight. The, we, I mean, technically, we've been in a civil war since Obama through ideology. Okay, we just haven't physically been killing each other. Uh, the way a, a, a normal conventional war is fought. But we've been having war in this country for the last 12 years, more than likely. Yeah. You know? And uh, I'll say this, they did everything to Donald Trump that you could, I mean, that you could fathom. I, I, I'll be honest with you, whether you like him or not, and yeah, he says some stuff, but hell, I do too. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. He's not every, but I don't know what, Think of the strength of this guy. Uh, when they lock you up and they raid your big home down in Florida, it don't matter how much money you got in the bank at that point. They put you in jail, you're going to jail. Okay. They've done everything but killing. And, lie, and I'll say it again. On the 13th, they tried to do that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, and I think uh, Mike hit on this before, you take these crackpots, okay, and what fuels them to get out of that basement mommy's basement okay is the rhetoric that is being spewed from the media okay if they weren't out there doing what they do these waterheads would still be in mommy's basement playing video games okay yeah. but it in it in bolt it makes them uh what do they call it it empowers them to think you know i can go out there and be this guy and this guy had i mean most people don't want to say this, but he had no future. I mean, look at the guy. He had no future, but now he is he is he is martyred to those that believe in his cause. Mm -hmm. And to them, that is more important than living to be 
the ripe old age of 60. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he, this, there are, I mean, you've seen it on social media, people, you know, throwing accolades at the guy, you know, mm-hmm. and pissed off that he missed. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's what I see a lot of as people saying, maybe next time they'll get him. I mean, and they just say that openly. And it's just, I have to stop reading. I have to turn it off because mm-hmm. it, it depresses me so much. You know, and what's going to happen on uh, September 19th? That's the date that Trump is supposed to be uh, sentenced, isn't it? Still, mm-hmm. September. I if believe. they are stupid enough to put that man in prison, that might be the spark that lights the fire. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, final thoughts, guys. We're running way over, but it's still it's very interesting. So, it's not that I mind it going long, but I just you know some people including myself, have a, a short attention span. But I think it's interesting enough uh, what we've been talking about that the people are still here. I hope they are. And everybody, once we wrap up, by the way, everybody stay. And um, and so we could talk for just a moment. Well, I, I'll start with this on closing. In my opinion, Kamala Harris is a more viable candidate on the surface than Joe Biden. But when you peel back the layers, uh, it's 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 vacant. There there's nothing there. Okay, she I brings agree. nothing to the table, mm-hmm. and um, I think uh, it's going to take. Some, I mean, it's just like Obama. There there's a there they can orate. They they make a good presence. They're going to appeal to their voters. So I think the Democrats uh, have improved their position with Kamala. I just I hope it's not enough. Uh, She's a terrible order. Yeah, uh, if, Norm. If uh, Trump would eat her up and spit her out in a debate, absolutely. Well, that that is true, but at least yeah. she's not like you know she can actually, you know, she laughs. But I mean, Joe Biden couldn't formulate a three word sentence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but Joe Biden even in that was ahead of her. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, so I, it's going to be very interesting uh, who she picks as a running mate. That's going to be a, a catalyst for her. Yeah. Um, and, and Mike sent me a thing. Do you want to talk about that real quick, Mike, about um, what you predicted that it was going to happen and Kamala's team put out a thing? Uh, refresh my memory. Which, oh, well, what we were talking about is you said that what she's going to do is say, if you don't oh, be in as a presidential candidate, you're right. Well, that's already come out. Where yeah, that's if, already started. Yeah if, yeah. if you're not going to support her, then you're going to be labeled a racist. Yeah. That, that's already come out. Yeah. Well, I'm not supporting you, Kamala. I can just <laughs> well, tell you. I'm not a racist, but I'm definitely not supporting you. Yeah, I, I think uh, than I, I am. Yeah, I <laughs> do what <I'm> normal. <laughs> I think it'll wind up being, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think it'll wind up being kind of other names have been thrown out like Newsom and uh Whitmer. Here in Michigan, but yeah, or um, Michelle Obama. Yeah, yes. I, I don't yes. see anyone see trying to jump into this train wreck at this point. I think if they really have their eyes set on the White House, they'll wait until 2028. Yeah, because it's going to be a train wreck. If, if it, it cracks, it's a train wreck. Crash big. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it'll wind up being Harris. I think the Democrats already know it's over. And I think they're uh, they're just gonna ride this out and regroup and try to go again in 2028. That's yeah. what I think. Obama couldn't pass the physical. Yeah, just saying they would find parts there that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts. <Yes>. <laughs> uh, well, I will say this. Uh, do you remember the black gentleman? He was a judge on television. Was it Joe Franklin? Was that what? They, was yeah, that Judge Joe. Joe. Yeah. Okay. If you go on YouTube, there's a uh, Joe was on a podcast here a couple of years ago, and he tells you exactly what he thinks of Kamala. And they have to bleep out some things he oh, says yeah. about her. He called her some horrible things. I mean, so he's a black fella. She's a black lady. So, um, you know, so all your listeners out there, you know, if you think it might be a, a race thing, go go th- listen to what he says about her, you know, her yeah. reputation and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank y'all so much for uh, coming, and um, we've uncovered a little bit of new ground. And as this thing keeps going, let's let's uh, we won't do it every week, but let's occasionally just get back together and talk about it again. Does that sound all right? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. good. All right, yeah. y'all y'all hang on. Thank you for coming. Tighten up every chance you get. Trump twenty four. 
and we will be uh we will see y'all next week and you you guys hang on